Hey, Space Watchers, and welcome here from Brayman. It is this time of the year that the Space Tech Expo happens here in the town and brings this really vibrant environment into the city of space of Germany. And I have now the great honor to talk with someone here actually from Bremen, or at least who lives here, Professor Leslie Jane Smith. Welcome to Space Cafe Clips. How are you doing, Leslie Jane? Torsten, thank you very much. And greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Torsten and I are standing in front of a somewhat grey and wet horizon. However, we're in a building where we've just finished an amazing conference about future space services are they, as they are already being mapped and rolled out. Absolutely. So we are talking about the developments in commercial space law here and now with representatives from industry, UN, NGOs and the new very, very high tech uh, small sp space, new space startups. Ladies and gentlemen, I have in October been confirmed as new president of the International Space Law, um, uh, International Institute of Space Law, and it's in this context that uh, I and Torsten arranged to reach out and speak to you. Yeah, first of all, congratulations for your nomination as a president of the IASL. I think it's a, it's a great development to have also a strong woman leading this really established um, organization. I mean, the food step or the food steps you to fill are big, no doubt, as always, but I'm quite sure you will be handling it. So first of all, congratulations. Let us thank you. Uh, let yeah. our audience know what, what they can expect. So how will you as a new president change the direction? What what will be new? Thank you, Torsten. As those who are members of IASL already know, and those who are not yet members, you need to join us to take the subject of space law as it develops. You, have, you need to join us to help this conversation and dialogue continue so that we can map out the bridges that are needed. What we need is even greater friendships between space lawyers and engineers. Space lawyers and engineers actually get on extremely well. So we are working in, out of an institute that was established in 1960. There have been honourable, venerable predecessors to myself, including women. And I should say that there's a couple of very, very renowned historical figures who helped map out international treaties, Eileen Galloway, um, so that the women are... The, part and parcel of the space law um, sector and, and space sector, as you know from the, the various astronauts and cosmonauts we had early on. What we now have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is bridge the, uh, bridge the gap between technical regulation that ensures sustainability. We have to provide the rules for that and the draft rules which we currently have on the table, we have to look at through not through rosy glasses, we have to look at these as drafts through critical glasses. And so, in fact, one of the, the, the sessions yesterday, which I moderated, was on the draft EU Space Act. Torsten. Yeah, a, a big theme. But let's coming back to your new presidency and the new legislation that you're in. What can members, what can the outside expect? So maybe you can highlight a bit of the ideas where you want to go. Exactly. IISL should be called in to many more fora to provide the input on exactly this bridge that has to be built. Mm -hmm. There, I have just returned from an um, on, on invitation from the, Associ the Asian Pacific uh, Organization for Space Cooperation. Yeah. Fantastic conference. There are eight states that are looking for input into space law. And I have said that our members who are interested and who are qualified, not all members are experts, some are young, in younger yeah. years, are willing to go out and interact. I am hoping to reach out to various European uh, governments and stakeholders to convey this message. We as IISL are not there as flowers on the mm -hmm. wall, but we have a phenomenal um, compact 
knowledge base through our members. Absolutely. And this is something that should be called upon. And I feel since COVID, um, there's been a dip and a dive in communication uh, at all levels. And this is why, be this the EU, be this the UK, be it whatever country, mm. be it Mongolia, we are and we have the, the language skills and the knowledge and expertise that can help and, these sectors. And uh, you mentioned the EU Space Act um, draft. And I think that is a huge opportunity for the entire space law community to bring in profound, relevant ideas to shape that into something really tangible and usable later on, uh, on the benefit of the space sector, but also on the Europe European Union. Absolutely. Yesterday was a panel where the, the DEFIS representative, Rudolf Munoz, mm was available to, to answer questions and to, uh, to give a, an update on the draft. We understand that the draft will be amended in response to mm -hmm. certain um, criticisms and encouragement uh, to become more precise in certain aspects. The draft has not been seen as interesting and attractive by third countries. And of course, this is a challenge because we're not looking to create barriers. I mean, when I say we, I mean, I'm talking about the yeah. EU itself. And so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of work still to be done. Absolutely. But that's why it is a draft. And that's what people have to recognize. It's not finished. It's not presented to you. Take it or leave it or not leave it. Just take it. In that case, it is a draft. And the EU actively is asking for feedback from the member states, from individuals and they will incorporate it and then we will see another iteration and uh, that will of course take time. Absolutely, so what I and my new presidency am also looking to do is first of all outreach, continuing to expand the community of membership, also to make it a little bit more transparent. How does one become a member? Looking to include institutional members, industry, associations and from there help us accompany this next voyage and journey which is literally building the bridge between technical requirements and legal regulations technical regulations and this is something which is not apparent to many we were talking about risk assessment yeah. in this morning's workshop and the risk has to be defined so that the lawyers get the rules right Absolutely. and once we have that then there's, a, I think, a greater clarity, Torton. There is an, a hell of a lot to do still. I mean, uh, we are just at the beginning at a space is getting this momentum as we as we speak. So there is still a lot to uh, to do. And I'm, I'd love to hear that you say you want to increase the outreach and the communication. And that's something that we were all looking for over the last years. And we, we are looking into this new collaboration between uh, Space Watch Global and the IASL. Space Thank Watch you. Global and IASL will continue the dialogue together and at these various conferences. So for those of you who know of conferences where possibly either Space Watch Global is not on site, although that is more likely <laughs> to be a rare occasion, or IASL, please reach out and, and tell us there are so many space uh, activities going on around the globe. And this is the bottom line, Absolutely. or it should be the top line, we're global. We, space is global. It's not about our nation states. I know there's constitutions and there's sovereignty, but the actual issue itself is global. Okay. So between myself as new president and Torsten, who's a key communicator and person who knows how to actually manage our reach, we look forward to working with you. Lovely, Jane. Thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. And with that, Space Watch out.